with a magnet, giving them orgasms with my fellow accent. The homies flash green teddy, the original love shaker. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Come on in, come on in. Good morning, good morning. Love Chicago, good morning. Good morning. Morning, everybody. Come on in. Make sure you invite your followers uh, to the scope, Periscope this morning. Remember, we're trying to get our numbers up as high as possible, trying to get the hearts up. Um... I want to get to about 300,000 hearts by the end of the week. So that's a challenge to all of you all and to myself also. Uh, but let's get the numbers up. Let's invite some folks over. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's morning is uh, a blessed one so far. It looks like Atasha just joined us. Question for me. Kiku, um, let me know before we get started. Um, Janice or Jevnisi, thanks for joining. Um, invite your followers over, everybody. Invite your followers over. I want to see more invitations to have other people join. Which podcast system do I use? You know what? I have uh, my team out of New York um, who manages the podcast. I'm not for certain what um, I'm not for certain what podcast system they're using. So I'm sorry I can't answer that. But I'll find out. I'll find out and I'll share that on a scope. Teddy, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining. All right. All right. So. Let's get started. Uh, hopefully, you all are inviting your followers over. Um, but I wanted this Periscope to be short and sweet. Uh, and I wanted to really speak to all the entrepreneurs out there and speak to those that are um, building their brand. Um, one thing that I've learned as a professor um, at DePaul University, uh, and one thing that I've just learned in general is... <clears throat> The value that the Generation Zs have, the, when I say the value that they have or they bring to the table, uh, to uh, entrepreneurs, individuals, again, uh, building their own brand or building a product, they are able to tap into their own network and teach us so much about what the young up and coming generation Z's are looking for. Um, because they are the youngest in our generation, a lot of our products, a lot of our services, um, and our brands will be speaking to them. They're going to be the ones that are going to be using it a lot of times. So as we talk about reaching and tapping into uh, whole new markets or reaching and tapping into a greater number of people so that our brands can be extended uh, so that we can get more followers, so we can get more viewers. So our content um, and the materials that we are producing from a marketing perspective uh, is innovative, is different, is creative. These are the folks that are bringing the, uh, the cutting edge mindsets. Uh, and they are really kind of pulling from what they as a generation are looking for. Um, just recently in my classroom, I wanted to share a story. Um, my students at DePaul University, just in my classroom, I posted to them. I said, you know what, you all, I want to build my followers. I want to have over a million followers. Um, and I kind of gave them a timeline. And they said, uh, Chef Professor. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Chef Professor or Professor Chef. Um, they said, we know exactly what to do. Uh, they asked me about all of these uh, different social media platforms and things that I had no idea about. Like, um, I knew about Snapchat, but I'm not on Snapchat. So I told them, I said, are you all on, uh, on Periscope? They're like, what's Periscope? And they were like, you're, you're not on Snapchat? I was like, what's Snapchat? <laughs> but, um, you know, it's interesting because of the divide. Here's a, a Generation Z a group that are all about Snapchat. And here I am who's thinking Periscope is the way to go. I'm like latest and greatest, right? So 
they're like, chef, you need to be able to extend yourself to, uh, to all elements, right? So not only have the Periscope, but have the Snapchat. And they say, you know what? We want to come up with some ideas for you um, that will help you to uh, extend your numbers into our, into our generation, uh, into what we're looking for from a food perspective and from a, um, from a creativity perspective. So we were just sitting at the table, uh, and just kind of brainstorming. I picked some of the, uh, you know, some of the brightest students in the classroom. Um, and they came up with some really cool ideas and took it by its horn and decided that they were going to lead this for me. Again, you know, a lot of times uh, as adults or as folks that have so-called been there, done that, we want to discredit the younger uh, the younger network, the younger population. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're just young. Um, and what I find is they bring a substantial value. They bring a value. And not only do they bring this value, these students know the value add that they bring to the table which is to me dynamic. So, uh, long story short, uh, you know, we've developed some strategies. I'm so excited about them. Uh, some new videos, uh, some new ways to really reach a market that, uh, you know, I don't know if I would have necessarily reached had I not involved, um, these younger, uh, these younger students. So when I tell you all, and when I talk to you all about really reaching out and using your kids, using your kids' friends, right? Um, using your networks, if your professors, using your students, um, if your teachers, using your students as an opportunity to learn from them, as an opportunity to learn from them. And it's called humility, you all. Some of us don't have it. Some of us need it. Um, but it's just humbling ourselves and realizing the value that everybody brings to the table. Um, we're all gifted and creative in our own right, you know? Um, of course, with age comes wisdom. And uh, along my journey, as I continue to build my brand and, and my company, I'm learning that having the older, more seasoned um, minds, those folks that have been there and done it and have been successful at it. Um, I have mentors that are millionaires. I have mentors um, loose mentors that are billionaires, right? That I can tap into and bounce ideas off and get their perspective about things. So that to me is just as valuable, or excuse me, that is just as valuable as having that younger generation provide me with, uh, the tools that I need in order to reach a market, um, so that I have a greater number of followers, that I have a greater access to a market of people that can afford the services, that will eventually be able to afford the services, and frankly, are using the social media platform, which is going to be taking over um, like wildfire, you know? So uh, it's really interesting, and it's making ourselves much more diverse. Uh, it's making ourselves uh, able to speak to a larger uh, larger range of individuals. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it, especially when, when I talk about food. Food is that one thing that really has no barrier. It has no bias. Uh, it's not racist. It's not sexist. Uh, everybody, for the most part, uh, I'm not going to, everybody, for the most part, kind of enjoys it. Um, you know, food is that one thing that people celebrate around. You know, it's a conversation piece. Uh, you know, it's no it's no doubt that food is probably the number one most search or viewed um, component when it comes to social media on uh, the Internet. You know, the videos, the food videos and the food, um, food photos and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I decided, I, I said, I really want to share this with you all in hopes that it can it can help somebody. You know, it can either help change somebody's perception about the Generation Z uh, population. And I use the word population so uh, educatedly, you know, it's like, uh, but, you know, it's it's the uh, it's the young folks, 
you know, tapping into our young folks and, and recognizing that they bring a dynamic uh, perspective. And we have to value that. We have no choice but to value it. So just think about that. Think about that. Any questions? Um, any questions? I'm excited uh, to see what these students are going to do. Uh, I'm going to share with you all, of course, along the journey. Um, you know, you get, and the thing about it is you got, you got to get some dynamic folks, get some dynamic kids that are uh, serious about building for themselves, that are about learning. A lot of times, you know, these students are like, hey, we'll just do it because we want to get the experience, you know? Uh, which for me is great, you know, um, but it's not always just about using the students for uh, what they bring to the table, but that experience helps them out and, um, you know, they recognize it and they want to jump in the deep end. They want to jump in the pool and get wet and, and, and see what it's all about. So bravo and kudos to all of you Gen Z's out there and, um, students out there that are interested in, in helping and, and just getting your feet wet and really sharing your knowledge and your network, which again is of great value with folks like me. <laughs> so what else, what else can I answer out there? Um, as I get ready, I'm going to head on over to the, uh, to the gym, but what else can I answer out there for folks? Talk to me. You all talk to me. Talk to me. Give me some questions. Talk to me. And no, I'm not driving for those that are asking. I am stationary. I'm still. Questions out there. Questions out there. Thumbs up if this has been helpful for you all. The class you are teaching, what type of class is it? Um, I teach a course at DePaul University in the School of Hospitality, and the class is called Contemporary Trends in Cuisine and Culture. So what I do is I introduce the students to different cultures, different food trends, um, different um, uh cultural elements of, of cuisine, you know, things that they may have never tried before. Introduce them to the hospitality industry and how uh, culture plays a very big part in what these hotels uh, and boutiques offer as it relates to services, as it relates to rooms. So just really introducing them into that world of kind of uh, specifically cuisine, but also bringing in the um, that kind of hotel element as well, because it all kind of plays together. So the students are loving it. Um, you know, the course is uh, is served to really be more hands on. It's designed to for the students to get real life experience outside of the classroom. Um, one thing that I told myself is, uh, you know, when I was a student, you know, writing and doing the exams and all that other stuff was great, right? I mean, it was okay, you know, it was what we had to do. But I felt like the biggest bang for my buck um, as a student was being able to get out, of, get out there and get the exposure, get the experience from the real world. So... Uh, it's an, it's uh, awesome to be able to provide these students with these opportunities. And a lot of times these students, hey, what's going on, Darius? Thanks for joining, my man. Um, a lot of these students um, are being exposed to people that they would have never been exposed to. So we're talking the uh, CEOs of the hotels. We're talking executive leaders, right? Uh, we're talking uh, about entrepreneurs. So a lot of the students are being introduced to entrepreneurs that are starting out, right? That are starting their own chocolate companies, that are starting their own bakeries, um, that are producing their own uh, food products, you know, and it's being taught from somebody who has uh, been there and is going through it. So it provides that sense of credibility as well. So they love it. They love it. Other questions, other questions. 
No, I'm not cooking for Steve today. I am not in the uh, not in the studio today or next week. So I'm focusing on my book, you all. I am. This is a blessing because I'm focusing, focusing on my book. I should have been. I should have had my proposal done um, a while ago. But somebody say, Lord, Jesus, fix it. <laughs> but uh, it's coming along nicely. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, one thing about me and one thing you'll learn about me along my journey is I don't act out of haste. Um, I, you know, I don't try to push things that don't organically or naturally work or fit. Um, so it just has to be the right time for me. Um, and I just stay prayerful with that. You know, and and I'm always kind of attuned to the word and the and the and the voice of God, just to make sure that I don't, uh, you know, jump into something before it's my time, so to speak. Um, so, you know, that's why it's taken me so long to to do a book. But I'll tell you, this book is, whew, it, I, I don't even know if I. Would, I mean, it's a book, but it, it's it, it's so much more than a book. It is, it is truly a healing mechanism um, that has already attracted the attention not only nationally but internationally. Um, and I, I'm just believing in it, y'all. I'm believing in it. And hey, if we can't believe in ourselves, then can nobody believe in us? Being a chef, how did you get to, how did you get the basis of your brand? How did you find what represented Judson? It was a journey. I'm telling you, there is no one fix, one quick answer about who you are as a brand. You're constantly determining and developing who your brand really is, you know, but at the core of it, uh, I always knew what I had. You know, I had a story. And at the um, and the story was really the foundation behind uh, my brand. Um, it took a lot of soul searching. It took a many come to Jesus moments, okay, um, for me to really understand and 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 flesh out what the purpose really was. And then uh, once I had that, I was able to then develop the brand constantly develop and I'm continuously developing the brand I'm no uh, expert at branding I'm no expert at, at, um, at entrepreneurship because I have not uh, you know I have not seen the results that um, that would deem me an expert in that field you know so you know maybe fast forward in a well, prayerfully fast forward in a couple of days, I could be a billionaire. But if, um, you know, fast forward a time where I've been able to uh, to do my due diligence, right, and to give my time, then I'm able to speak from an expert perspective. Now I just talk from a, uh, from a perspective of how I'm doing it, how I've done it so far, how I'm doing it in hopes that it will help other people. Um, so, you know, I, I always like to just say that, you know, um, what I talk about is, is, is my, my perspective, my, my point of view, um, and, and what has kind of worked for me, what is working for me and what isn't working for me. So good morning. Only one miss more. Good morning to you. So, um, so hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that answered your question. Hopefully that answered your question. And I know um, somebody told me yesterday I need to shave. So I know y'all. I'm trying to do a little something different, um, but I'm going to handle that today because I have an event. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. But um, I've, I've got an event that I'm going to tonight, so I'm going to get this taken care of. Um, hey, Miss Ronnie, what's going on? Miss Ronnie in the house. Um... So, again, hopefully all of this has helped you all out, um, kind of giving you a little bit of clarity, a little bit of insight, uh, just in terms of the value that the Generation Zs kind of play uh, and they bring to the table. I'm excited about them. I'm a rock with them. Uh, I'll tell you one of the greatest decisions of my career so far excuse me, one of the greatest uh, decisions of my career so far has been to step into the role of professor for a major university. And I can only attribute that to God. I can only attribute it to God. Um, 
the value, the network, and the resources that come along with it, oh my God, it continues to blow my mind. It continues to blow my mind. It puts me into a space. It puts me into a circle. Uh, it puts me into a network with people uh, from around the world. Um, and it's specifically in the School of Hospitality. Specifically in the School of Hospitality. Uh, and if you know anything about hospitality, it is a broad broad, broad, broad name, and it expands in so many directions. So it's it's awesome. Yeah. So talk to me. Talk to me. I'm losing some followers here. Let's try to gain some followers. You all uh, invite followers over uh, so I can answer any questions that folks may have. I know it's morning time. Um... I told y'all I want to have uh, 300,000 hearts by the end of the week. So you all have to work with me and make it so. Somebody say, make it so. Uh, thumbs up if this has been helpful for you all. Thanks, Ms. Ronnie. Um, thumbs up if this uh, Periscope has been helpful for you all. Now, how many of y'all are not going to go and... Uh, Start beating up your kids. You're going to tell your kids just how valuable they really are. <laughs> Will my book be reasonable? Purple Flower. Uh, great question. Yes. Um, I can't I can't give the, the, the price point at this time. I, I just don't know it. But uh, but the book will be a, a reasonable price point. Um, and again, the my book is designed to really heal heal people. And it's going to be an investment. I'll tell you that. And I don't mean that in the context of always oh, going to be really expensive, but it's, you know, no matter how much it costs, I've learned that people spend money on what they want to spend money on. If you spend money on a $500 purse or a $750 pair of gym shoes, um, you know, you find value in what you want to spend your money on. So what I will tell you is uh, the book, of course, will not, I mean, the book will be a reasonable book, you know, it'll, it'll fit within the guidelines of what a book costs. But, um, you know, I, I don't doubt that people will spend uh, the money and invest in themselves. Um, because again, this is something that is, goes beyond just having a, a pretty little book on the, on the counter of your kitchen. This is something that is going to uh, to speak to your spirit, speak to your souls. Uh, it's going to be a healing element for so many people. Uh, and it's going to provide you with the tools. It's going to provide you with um, the strategies. And it's going to provide you with the recipes and the concepts on how to live healthier lives uh, for the rest of your life. You know, just not a quick fix. It's not a fad. It's not a, a one-off. It's not a, I'm going to lose weight in two weeks and think I'm going to be good and then gain it right back. I am equipping you with the tools that you need in order to live a healthier life for the rest of your life. Because so many of us are missing our callings because of our health issues. So many of us are being taken out of this world prematurely because of the decisions that we're making. But when we know better and we're equipped to do better, we do better. But it just depends on how much of, uh, you know, how valuable or the value that you see in it. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah. So no, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to break the bank. It's not going to break the bank. <laughs> Thank you so much, Purple Flower. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to get this book uh, all around the world. It's going to go all around the world. And, uh, you know, it only starts with a couple of people. That's why I encourage you all to invite your followers to these periscopes, uh, invite your followers to invite their followers um, because, you know, it just starts, it starts with a couple of people. And I told my students that, you know, I said, it starts with you all, you know, uh, the small group that came to me with this idea. I said, it starts with you all, 
you know, and just imagine the traction that it can take. So, uh, yes, there will be a book tour. There will definitely, there will definitely be a book tour, a uh, book tour both uh, here in the States and uh, internationally as well. So for all of my international Periscope uh, fans out there, uh, you know, will the uh, idea is to <clears throat> do some things in Europe, um, Africa, uh, of course, the Caribbean um, and the uh, um, um, South America. I mean, we, we plan on taking, you know, over the globe. Because everybody's being affected by it. Everybody's being affected by weight. Everybody's being affected by issues that affects their uh, their health. Um, you know, and I'm going to share this. I've, I found this out that um, a couple of the top countries that are affected by obesity, and this blew my mind, uh, were countries in the uh, Arab Emirates. So it was... Um, I think Dubai, um, uh, I don't know if it was Abu Dhabi, but it was, it was, you know, or there were a couple of countries in that area that were, uh, listed as the top three places where people are affected by obesity. So, uh, America wasn't even on, you know, America wasn't even in that top three. So it was just very interesting. Um, and it proved to me just how, uh, you know, how this disease, how uh, these ailments, how food uh, is affecting the lives of so many people. That's why when I tell you that obesity, food, addictions, those type of things, they're not, they're, they have no bias. They don't care what you look like. They don't care what your name is. They don't care how your hair looks. They don't care what skin color you are. They don't care about your religion or your faith. It will attack you. And it will attack you. So it's so many people out here that uh, that really need that healing. So somebody just put a message. Could you uh, drop that message one more time? I want to make sure that I answer that before I get off of here. Um... While Erica Badu is popping in the background. Oh, oh. I'm not going to sing this morning. <laughs> I'm going to do y'all a favor. <laughs> I'm going to do many of you all a favor this morning and not sing. Um, any last minute questions? Talk to me. Talk to me. These are, these are really cool because uh, I enjoy answering your questions and taking a look at your comments. And I'm going to keep it real, y'all. I had some hummus last night. I made this um, edamame, and, uh, edamame and chickpea hummus, y'all. <laughs> I know this is TMI, but, man. Chickpeas, hummus, beans, y'all. I'm a little gaseous. A little gaseous this morning. <laughs> I know that was too much information, but I feel like y'all family, so we can rock together. So that's why I'm like, you know, um, no, no, I don't, wait, that may have came out wrong. A little belchy this morning. <laughs> but we got to keep it real. Got to keep it 100, right? I think I missed that. All right, y'all. If there's no other, if there are no other questions on here, I'm gonna run. Um, thanks for all the hearts, you all. You know, you all can continue to follow me on my social media links, Instagram and Twitter at Judson Todd Allen, J U D S O N. If somebody can drop that at the bottom of the link, um, again, Instagram and Twitter, Judson Todd Allen. You can also hit me on my Facebook fan page at Chef Judson Todd Allen. Just drop a chef in front of it, Judson Todd Allen. And, of course, my website, which I just updated, uh, you can go to that and check it out, JudsonToddAllen.com. Thanks so much, uh, L. Gaines. Thanks so much for dropping the uh 
the uh, the website there. Also, you can go to my website and click and go to all my social media links from there. All right, right at the top. So I'm making it a little bit more user friendly. Um, where you have access to get to all of my social media links right at the top of the page. So www.judsontineallen.com. That's right. Get the hot sauce. Thumbs up for the hot sauce. Thumbs up for the hot sauce. You can go on my website. And look, the Super Bowl is coming up, y'all. The Super Bowl is coming up. I'm telling you, you do not want to go this Super Bowl without having my shuffling hot sauce at your table. Y'all can... Push aside the Tabasco, push aside the Franks. I know they spent a lot of money on a commercial. Unfortunately, I haven't yet. But I'm letting y'all know on Periscope that the Chef Lynn hot sauce is the must-have condiment for your Super Bowl Sunday. So make sure that you all get your bottles on the website at JudsonTideIsland.com. Uh, it makes for great wings. Uh, just Add it on chicken and fish. Uh, put it in dips. Um, I'm going to come out with a couple of recipes uh, before the Super Bowl. Uh, spicy chicken dip. Um, you know, so different dips that you can use using the hot sauce. Um, and again, it's healthy. So you don't have to worry about a whole lot of sodium. It's a healthy hot sauce. It's all natural. Low sodium. Less hot, more flavor. Okay? You can actually pronounce the ingredients on the back of the bottle, which is important. If you go ahead and order that, it'll come to you fairly quickly. Um, so go ahead and place your orders. Support. All right, y'all. I love you all so very much, and I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I'll probably check in with you all a little later on today. All right.